Today, we have people joining us from across the region, from many organisations, from many different walks of life. And we even have some men. So we're looking forward to a lively debate. And thanks to all of you for coming along. This event will explore the issues impacting on women's economic independence in Northern Ireland and ask, are women getting their fair share? In terms of the area that I know about, the media, it can be very difficult for women to get their fair share of airtime. When I worked on the political programme Hearts and Minds, which was presented by a male presenter and generally interviewed politicians, with the dearth of female elected representatives in Northern Ireland, I was often the only woman on air in a half-hour programme. So to discuss what needs to happen to ensure that women do get their fair share, we have assembled an illustrious panel of speakers. These are just some of them. Each of them will be talking on a different aspect of the issue, and then towards the end of the morning, there's a chance for you to ask questions when I chair a discussion panel. And in fact, if you haven't already a question in mind, please do get your thinking caps on. Written questions will need to be submitted by the break, which is around quarter past 11 this morning. As well as the speakers, you'll also be hearing the personal stories of six women via short video clips. These women will explain the difficulties that they have experienced while trying to maintain their economic independence. And these really are stories from the front line. These interviews have been filmed over the last few weeks and we're indebted to the women who've taken part and shared their experiences with us. And you can see the full video clips on the Equality Commission's website. For those of you on Twitter, the discussion is already underway, and if you haven't already, you can join in too. There is a hashtag of her fair share, or you can follow the Commission's Twitter feed, at EqualityComNI. And as you can see on the screen, we'll be showing the live Twitter feed at points throughout the morning. In terms of our agenda, we'll, we'll aim to break at around a quarter past 11 um, for coffee, and lunch will be served at 1.30. Uh, there are toilets, again, through either of these two doors, round to the side or just through there. And can I also draw your attention to the evaluation form in your conference pack, which we'd be very grateful if you would fill out. And finally, in terms of parking, before you leave this building, you will need to print an exit ticket from the machine in the foyer, otherwise you'll be stuck here. So, on to our speakers. As you know, equality in Northern Ireland is the responsibility of the Office of the First and Deputy First Minister, and we're delighted today to be joined by Jennifer McCann, MLA, the junior minister in that department. So I'll now hand over to Jennifer, who will formally open proceedings. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to thank um, Julia and also the Equality Commission for inviting me here um, just to open this morning's conference. And I know the theme for today's conference is getting a fair share, and its focus is on the issues that affect the economic independence of women. And one of the things probably that affects the economic independence of women um, is the availability or the non-availability of childcare. And as many of you here will know, we in government are committed to putting in place a system of accessible, affordable, quality childcare. And we aim to do this through our childcare strategy. Um, many of you may, maybe have already taken part in some of the consultations that have been ongoing and I'm very, uh, for the past three months. And we have been out there um, trying to do our best to listen to public opinion on the childcare needs of people here. Um, myself and Jonathan Bell were at one of the, the opening public consultation events and we have also been sitting in on other events that have been organised like groups from the, uh, like the Women's Resource and Development Agency. Um, we're, very, very, um, we're very keen to get the views of, of um, people in, working in communities, stakeholder groups and organisations um, who have an interest in childcare, but we're also very, very keen to talk to individual women also. So we'd be putting in place, um, our, we had put in place, sorry, um, stakeholder events that would include um, women from communities also. And our aim for the strategy is that it ensures that people who want to work, or people who want to train, or people who want to study, will not be prevented or come across barriers um, from doing so by a lack of childcare. 
Good quality affordable childcare that is accessible to all can only enhance uh, the economic independence of women. And OFM DFM, as Julia has said, has lead responsibility for gender equality across government. We deliver gender equality through the gender equality strategy. And the strategy aims to achieve a society in which men and women are equally respected and equally valued as individuals, and in which there is equality in terms of opportunity, rights, and responsibilities. And we are also very, very aware that there are structural inequalities there that also um, add to the barriers that women find um, when, when fulfilling their, their potential or fulfilling their role in society. So we're very, very keen to ensure that those structural inequalities are challenged and dealt with also. Key actions of the gender equality strategy include addressing gender inequalities in education and training, in public and political representation, inequalities in work-life balance, and inequalities in access to employment and in pay and in poverty. And all of these issues relate directly or indirectly to the economic independence of women. And if we can successfully address them over the coming years, we will have made substantive progress in terms of enhancing women's economic freedom and have made a real progress towards getting a fair share for all. The gender equality strategy is currently under review and we're looking at how it has performed against its targets and more importantly how it might be improved. In developing, managing, monitoring and reviewing the strategy, we have worked closely with representative groups and with the Equality Commission. And we're also working with stakeholder groups and organisations to ensure that our gender equality strategy will achieve the goals set for it, including the goal of increasing women's economic independence. And I know that today's event is in part a preparation for the forthcoming UN examination on the Convention and on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women that will consider how we have performed and in terms of our gender equality obligations. And I know that the Equality Commission and many other local groups will be submitting a shadow report that will inform the questions that will be asked during the examination. And we welcome all these reports. We also welcome the examination itself. It is good that there will be a reasoned, critical reviews of our performance on gender equality. It is only when people review our track record on gender equality that it will give us the basis for going forward and making it better and doing it better. We need to be keeping to be challenged. We need to be keeping in, on improving our uh, performance. But we really, really need to be listening, coming out and listening to conferences like this. We need to be listening to, to people on the ground, individuals who work in communities, who represent, um, or sorry, who work in communities with women's organisations, and who actually represent women um, through those organisations and those groups. Because it's only by listening that we can know that we are what we're doing, whether it's it, it's it's being productive or whether it's right or whether it's wrong. So. You know, I, I really, really enjoy coming to conferences also like this here to, to listen also just to, to hear um, different people's um, point of views. So in conclusion, I really hope you have, and I know you have a, a, a good uh, panel of speakers here today, but I do hope you have an informative and very thought-provoking conference. I support its focus on a fair share for all and welcome the discussion ahead on women's economic independence. And I kind of just say, you know, our door is always opened if there are organizations, our individuals, or groups that feel, you know, that, that there's issues there that they want to discuss with us up at um, the office of the First and Deputy First Minister also. So I hope you enjoy the conference and um, have a good day. Thank you.